All right, let's call this uh, meeting to order. Uh, and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, since we have a hybrid meeting, I would just like to do a roll call. So, um, Alderperson Ackley? Alderperson Ackley? Her mic is off. Yes? Here. Thank you. Ruth? She's here. Uh, Jim and Yolanda Graf? I don't see them online. Jim and Yolanda? Oh. Are you guys caller one? No? Okay, I don't I don't hear anything from them. <clears throat> All right, Char Hinsey and Mark Hinsey are here. Um, Annie, I saw you online. Yep, <coughs> Annie's here. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Tom Mitchell. Mm, Tom, are you caller one? Mm, okay, not hearing anything from Tom. Carolyn, I see you online. I'm here. Now, is Rich with you, or did he uh, walk? Did he leave the room? He started his class. Oh, okay. All right. So no, we we saw him on the screen briefly. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah. No, he's starting his class. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, Cole, we see you online. Present. Thank you. Uh, Trent. Hello. Hi, we see you online. Anna and Henry are here in person. All right, we've got both of them. And Patrick is here. And Julie, are you online? I think she's watching the uh, WFCS live broadcast okay, in Boston. So, okay, so she's not logged in. No. <clears throat> okay. All right. That's good for roll call. All right. Uh, sir, do we have any correspondence for this month? Uh, just to kind of recap. So the email that I sent out to everybody on February 2nd, I had stated that we had uh, exchanged some emails with Esslingen in January. So that was the most recent from them. And then um, also on that February 2nd email, I included a draft of a reply email that I sent off to Subame. I sent that on February 4th. I have not received any response back, so that's the last communication from them. And that's all I have. All right, um, let's move on to the approval of the minutes from the November 5th meeting that were emailed out to everyone. And uh, would someone like to make a motion on that? Need a second? We got a motion and a second. Minutes approved. Any discussion? Any discussion, I'm sorry. That's oh, okay. Hearing none, we'll move on. You just have to vote. Call Pardon? Vote. We have to vote. Oh, we have to vote? Yep. All in favor? All in favor, say aye. 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 Sorry, everybody. It's been a while for me since I've done this. Rabbit's rules. <laughs> opposed. <laughs> Any opposed? Um, I'm going to try this again. Hello? Can you hear Jim and Yo? Who is it? Oh, is this is Yo. Can you hear Oh, okay. Us? Now we can hear you. Yes, now we can hear you. Okay. All right. Are you guys, you guys must be caller one, huh? Probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're just on the phone. Okay. Gotcha. Yes. All right, so there's no uh, opposes of the uh, minutes from November 5th. Hearing none, uh, let's move on to items for discussion and possible actions. Um, Annie, are you out there with the uh, Essling and Coffee Talks updates from? 
Yes, yes. So, um, yeah, so basically um, Esslingen, some folks from Esslingen um, reached out, I think, to Sheboygan to find out about whether a handful of people here would be willing to um, really help with just some informal conversational English by Zoom. So we, we've been having video meetings um, for a handful of the firefighters or firefighters, dispatchers and schedulers um, at the fire department in Esslingen. Um, because they've been recently getting more calls or I guess an increase in time over calls, um, an increase over time in calls that are in English. And so a few of those who are answering the calls um, just aren't comfortable, totally comfortable with their level of conversational English knowledge um, when those calls come in. And so to increase their, um, their confidence and their kind of understanding of it, um, even though they all know English quite well, but um, they really just kind of want to polish up their skills in it conversationally. Um, so the idea is um, for a handful of us here in Sheboygan to have some virtual meetings with a hand with those um, firefighters and dispatchers um, to help them with that. So um, this, I think this idea started back in maybe late October or so. Um, so I remember we had mentioned it in um, Sarah Rich had mentioned the idea of it for the first time at, for this group, um, I believe at the November meeting. Um, so yeah, so I, I'm sort of the representative for the Mayor's International Committee in the group. We have, um, I believe it's four or five total kind of partner couplings um, with one person from the Esslingen Fire Department and then one um, Sheboyganite, you know, paired up. Um, and we, we had a little bit of a gap in the scheduling um, due to some health issues from someone on the Esslingen side who was quite involved in it. Um, but after that kind of little hiatus, um, we actually just this week have started our first set of calls with them. So I met with um, with a firefighter named Christian this morning um, and had a good 20 or 30 minute or so kind of informal um, video meeting with him and I'm um, just kind of talking about, you know, whatever in life and what life is like in Sheboygan and Esslingen um, to learn some some language there. So yeah, so it's been going really well and um, we plan to have a handful more of those kinds of meetings over about every week or every other week um, over maybe the next month or something similar to that. Um, so I'll keep you all posted, but that's pretty much the idea for it. And I think um, my impression anyway is that the beginning of the program has been going really well. Sounds good. Is there a certain time that you guys meet or talk? The um, the on the Sheboygan side, we had one um, sort of pre meeting just to kind of talk about, you know, ideas for conversation or um, sort of reminders about ways that might be helpful to talk with them as they're learning English better. Um, so that meeting we had, I don't know, a couple months ago, or maybe in January it was. Um, so that was sort of the one kind of bigger group meeting, but it only had the Sheboygan side. And other than that, it's really been um, individual timed meetings at different times um, based on the schedules of, um, of each sort of pairing of, of folks. Sounds great. Any discussion on that? I'm just wondering if we got one of the dispatchers from our dispatch to participate, do you think that would be of any value so they could talk about things that they see coming in uh, when people uh, bring emergencies to their attention by dialing 911? Mayor Mike, that's a good idea that no one actually has brought up to my knowledge in this group, um, but I can bring it back to um, to Carly at the Sheboygan Fire Department, who's kind of been one of the main coordinators for it, and um, John Pekinen at People to People as well, who's been involved. Um, so I'll bring that idea up to them and um, and maybe also Paul, who's the main coordinator on the Esslingen side, just to get a sense of whether that might be helpful, because I think that's a good idea. Um, some of the specialized vocabulary, especially, that um, might be helpful for them is not something that, you know, that the rest of us who are already involved in the, in the conversations are as familiar with. So that's, that's a good thought to bring up. Thank you. No problem. Let me know if you need a contact. Okay, thanks. All right, uh, moving on to 3.2, um, discussing our Esslingen trip in 2022. Does anybody have any input to say about that? Um, at this time, I have not reapproached um, anybody at Discovery Travel. Um, I know our kids from 
um, People of People hopefully are going to be going in August uh, if everything goes well. Um, but there really has been no further discussion on um, our potential trip for next year. Is that something anybody else wants to address or talk about? I mean, I know that things haven't changed a lot in the world yet, but is it something we want to just wait for a while or? Patrick. I think, I think we should wait for a while and see, you know, how things uh, change with COVID across the nation and in, in, in Europe, uh, and then we can make our final decision somewhere down the road. Yeah, I think until we all figure out what's going on here. It's just something I would guess too, I would guess that we might have a better sense even by later in the spring or early summer as more and more people, at least here and hopefully in Europe are getting vaccinated as well. Mark? I did have just a little thought, you know, we always go in May and maybe conceivably we might think September of uh, 2022. Otherwise, the weather should be about the same. It'll just be a little darker. I mean, when we go there in May, it's nine o'clock before it's dark. And yet, so if you're walking around, you can see where you're going. But I think the weather would be the same if you went in September. So, because I'm, you know, obviously we need about a nine month window to probably get this from start to finish. September of this year, you're saying? No, 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 no,
how long an exchange would be? Because like the middle school one, they do three weeks here and then switch and do three weeks. It, um, it could all be discussed um, you know, with our, our counterparts over there, what we would exactly want the program to look like. Since we will be uh, taking students, we want to make sure um, that it fits with you know, both the, the programs that we're running. I think if this is something that we'd like to pursue, uh, we just need to uh, instruct us to uh, open the discussion with Esslingen and put uh, some of the musical people together to talk about this and see if this has legs. So if uh, this looks okay, you know, this is something we could envision. I talked to Josh a little bit about the concept of uh, the, the middle school exchange where uh, hopefully if this would happen, the students in Esslingen would house the, the students that are visiting from Sheboygan, and then likewise, we would ask the students here to do the same uh, so that we could eliminate the cost of, uh, of lodging, and then we just have to worry about uh, the cost of uh, any airfare and things like that. Um, and Josh, could you talk a little bit about that? You know, is that something that you feel the families could pick up in the symphony, or, or would you be looking for any assistance from us in that area? Uh, in terms of taking in students that come over here or no just in, in the cost of the airfare um, well uh, that's uh, why we want to talk about the the timeline specifically specifically if we're going to have to be doing uh, fundraising this is quite a, a large project to fundraise for so we'd want uh, plenty of time to be able to do that and to get the word out there and get uh, get the interest um, because a program like this is obviously going to spark interest in a, a number of students that may not be involved in our program already um, so that's, you know, one hope is, um, you know, recruitment for, for the arts, but um, having, having that time to be able to do any fundraising that we need um, is obviously going to be, um, you know, a big, a big deal. But, um, yeah, the parent organization uh, is great with helping in, in fundraising and really coordinating uh, any number of things with the Youth Symphony. Uh, we have a, a very strong parent organization, and you know, even within our uh, our own symphony. Um, a lot of folks would be on board in supporting this, absolutely. And uh, when I mentioned this to, to Rich, he had uh, brought up the fact that uh, people to people might have an interest in, in being involved in some way, so I'm not sure what that would be, but that would also be out there as a possibility. Any other discussion? Okay, none. Um, should we move on? Thank you, Josh. Well, well, I'm just wondering if we should uh, initiate the discussion with Esslingen. Any any feelings about that? Would you feel positive about this uh, concept? You I think it's a great idea um, to at least talk with Esslingen about and find out whether there might be interest there. I think it's a really exciting idea to have an arts-based um, exchange. I'm not thoroughly familiar with the history of the different kind of types of exchanges, but I think it sounds really exciting. I think it's worth at least exploring with Esslingen for sure. And you have contacts over there, correct? Yes, I do. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy to reach out to, to any of their directors. And, and well, what we'll do is, is start uh, with something with uh, with Catherine, our, our contacts over there with Esslingen, so they, they're aware of it. And, uh, and we'll put uh, you as a... Uh, on that email so she would have your information and then you might want to give me some information on the people you would like to work with there and, and hopefully that will all fit together. Very good. All right, we'll follow through with that. Thank you right, very much you. for coming tonight, Josh. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's move on. I guess uh, future possible fundraisers for... Um, for our events going up, uh, I know we had, we did not do Esling and Fest last year. Um, Rich had sent me an email that uh, sounds like Three Sheeps uh, would be willing to do this again if all works out. If if at the time frame that we are able to gather, maybe in smaller groups, maybe a smaller thing. Uh, and um, other, I know that we've talked about doing other things to raise money. Is any any other thoughts out there of uh, fundraisers for us? Um, this is Joel. Hello. Yes. This is Joel. Maybe we would consider the um, Esslingen Fest as a drive-through. 
success depending upon um, the status of COVID later this year. I would agree with that. I know of other people who had the drive through uh, rise and they've gone over very well, very well. Okay. Um, and you know, maybe by October things will be, because that's when we generally do it is in October. Yep. We'll have a little better handle on it that we can do a drive through and maybe a small gathering, a limited number. But again, I think it's all going to come down to what the public health will allow us to do, correct? I think that's true, Patrick. And uh, the other thing I th we think we need to start doing is, uh, as Rich usually work with them on the date that's possible. And uh, if we get that set up, you know, it could be tentative for a while until we make final plans. I still have a stock of over 500 of the cranes I made. Um, that project I kind of put on hold with everything with COVID, not really sure how we wanted to approach that. If we want to uh, consider talking about that again, I'm, I'm definitely open to it. Um, you know, any way of fundraising that uh, encourages social distancing and maybe uh, involves um, some type of an item that people can purchase, uh, I think would be, um, beneficial. Um, Cole, I remember um, last year when you presented the idea with the, the 3D printed cranes that that could involve like an art installation and um, like an awareness sort of campaign. Are you still thinking yes, that's correct. doing something along yeah. those lines? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I kind of put the brakes on that because I wasn't sure about encouraging people to come out and look at something, but at this point, I think it would be a really good idea, and I have definitely a small army that we could uh, put together if we find a, a location for that. Um, I would be happy to work on uh, work on that with whoever would like to be involved in having some type of a write-up and uh, putting a nice display together. And we do have a couple people in the committee that are here now that weren't here a year ago. So um, maybe for for their information, could you maybe explain a little bit more about the, I know you get you gave some info about it, but just kind of for our, some of our newer people that aren't familiar with the 3D printed cranes at all, uh, maybe just a short okay. back story. Uh, yeah, um, uh, as, as briefly as I can, um, Paper origami cranes, um, or origami in itself, is uh, they're folded and put together in a a, uh, a display of a thousand. Uh, when there is a goal for some type of a healing or um, you know peace and prosperity, it's kind of like a it shows kind of a great effort. And uh, I had uh, started printing. Uh, 3D printing uh, these crane models that we could hang on display and then sell individually uh, for a fundraiser. If anything in itself, uh, just on display to bring awareness to what we're uh, trying to do with re rekindling our relationship with uh, Tsubame uh, and even possibly sending us uh, an installation to them. Yes, Mary has won right there so oh yeah right there and uh, i have um over 500 and that would be sufficient for a display um and i can continue uh producing more um we just like to we need a, a place to display them that they can stay for you know an extended period of time at least several months uh and and so that people could come and kind of take a look at that and then be able to read a uh, backstory about our relationship with them and what we're, what we're trying to do. So if that answers any questions or. I think it gives us a brief overview of, of that for the new people involved, right, Sarah? Yeah. Cause um, <coughs> Betty and Annie are the ones that come to mind that, 
weren't here a year ago and they didn't have the backstory about the project. Okay. And I know yeah. 3D printing is really affordable. It's, it's very cheap to produce these things and uh, they, they look really nice. It was a, um, an easy, uh, interesting uh, thing that um, m my Japanese friends thought was very interesting and they appreciated the, uh, the effort and the sentiment involved there. Yes, they're like the ones that uh, Mary had out there. It shows they're very uh, a neat looking item. Um, and maybe, I don't know, is there a place, we had talked about maybe the John Michael Cole Art Center trying to find something. Did anybody approach for the displaying that there? And I, I think like everything just stopped in its tracks yeah. when Cole was like just getting started yeah, with it. Right. <laughs> so I think, yeah, we're kind of still at, other than he's got 500 of them now, so there's good supply, but beyond that, I think we're kind of still at, at the bottom level of figuring the rest of it out. And another thing that Rich said is that we're talking about fundraisers in, and uh, and brought up the John Michael Kohler Art Center. Um, is there any news from anybody about if they're doing concerts this year that we can uh, maybe uh, try to raise some extra dollars there if people are willing to work, if it's going to go on. So I did email my contacts at the Art Center today, and they have not made a decision yet. They're anticipating a decision will be made by the end of March. So we kind of will just we'll just wait to hear what they decide to do with um, the the Levitt Amp concerts, and we'll certainly you know pass the information along, along to the rest of the committee as we find out from them. I think a lot of our stuff is all on hold, as we all know by COVID, at least we're trying to get back together here and <clears throat> get things rolling again. Um, the next, uh, I mean, we kind of went over the Esling and Fest, correct? Yeah. In the fundraising uh, talking, and uh, we're, uh, I guess, moving on to promoting other Sheboygan international relationships. Um, is that also going to be with besides Sumbe, or uh, I'm not sure what the, this is about, Sarah? That that's the one um, that Rich has reached out to other entities in the city of Sheboygan that have their own international Correct. relationships. So we had um, the the information in the photo from it's like Guatemala, I believe. <clears throat> couple months ago so I think we're still kind of open to ideas for anyone that has interesting stories to feature I mean it can be like a paragraph and a picture sort of thing just trying to continually <laughs> educate people about international relationships that Sheboygan has with the rest of the world so it's it's open for anyone's ideas Any discussion with anybody on that? Have we heard anything else? Hearing none, should we move on then, I guess, to Sumbame, um, Sister City Relationships? Yeah, I had a chance to talk to uh, Father William uh, Bolson, the new pastor at uh, Grace Episcopal Church. And um, I, I, before I met with him, I went online and looked at his resume. And, uh, he spent seven years in Japan before coming to Sheboygan, and um, I, when we met, I had a chance to talk to him a little bit about that and uh, mention our our Subami sister city that we're trying to, uh, relationship we're trying to uh, revitalize. And he said that he knew some of the clergy up in that area, and that he would try to reach out to them and uh, see if we could uh, maybe you know uh, get something going through through that contact. But uh, he speaks Japanese fluently. He's, uh, he also speaks Hmong fluently and is noted for some of his translations of Hmong into English. And uh, so this is uh, a new contact, and we'll see where this takes us. Any other discussion on, on this? 
Um, so, Mayor Mike, would you be willing to uh, forward me his information so I could speak with him? I have not been able to find a single person who can speak any Japanese in this area. That would be really excellent for me. Sure, be happy to, Cole. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so, so far, uh, we received a response for them, from them. That's great. Um, if we continue to send a, res uh, a response back, um, we will continue doing this for the next 100 years before we get anywhere. Uh, wh what we need to do is come up with a very clear request of what we would like to, what type of a program or what type of a interaction we'd like to have with them and, and politely request that we work towards that. Otherwise, they will just send, they'll, they'll give us a very re polite response and that will be it. Um, so whoever, I'm not really sure what some of the initial, um, programs or exchanges we would like to start. Um, but once we've come up with a request, I don't know if it'd be, you know, student exchange or virtual, you know, like a, a virtual language exchange or something like that between schools, um, you know, and we can get that line of communication open and try to get something started. We've made a lot of progress. Beyond that, um, somebody is going to have to go there, which I'm more than happy to do. I have multiple contacts who will help me uh, with translation. Whoever does, we're going to have to have a face-to-face -face, um, and go and meet them and bow and shake somebody's hand and show our earnestness or my, you know, excuse me for being frank, but this will never go anywhere besides ping-ponging emails like we've been doing over the last few years. Thanks for that practical approach, and I appreciate that. Alderman Ackley. So I just wanted to let you guys know that I, my father is a consultant, and he lived, he's a native of Japan. And he has several contacts with the Subame government areas. And he told me that if we're having problems getting this off the ground and getting to know people, he would be happy to introduce me to some of those folks so that we can have an open dialogue and we can get this moving so that we can develop a better, you know, conversation with Subame. Because I think part of the issue is that nobody really has contacts. So I do have those government contacts. If you want me to... Um, just approach them and let them know that the city would like to get something going. I'm happy to do that. Um, that's up to you guys. I just I wanted think, to let you know. I think that's great, Betty, but I think Cole's suggestion of, this, of try, trying to talk about something that we want to do uh, re related to that exchange would be, you know, a good uh, thing to keep the conversation going rather than just... Uh, more of a general approach. So we'll have to uh, maybe look at some of the things we did in the past and uh, and pick something that we want to propose to them. So I, I when I was, uh, actually, when I just graduated from North in 2005, I was one of the students on the delegation to Tubame in the summer of 2005. Um, and I thought that was a terrific program. So, I mean, if we're looking at just as one anecdotal example, um, that was a really good program where we had um, I think it was mostly, if not all, high school students. We had a group of, it was less than 10, maybe maybe six or seven or eight or something of us um, who went there. And there were um, maybe three adults, um, you know, adults kind of chaperoning the, the student group. Um, but it was a really terrific experience. Um, it was, I think, two weeks, um, you know, and there were a lot of different um, kinds of festivals. There are kind of events that we went to that some were more formal, some were less formal, and um, there was um, some time in, in Tokyo as well to, to kind of explore that area. Um, but overall, I mean, I just found it a really excellent enter, excellent program. Um, and as a former participant of that, um, at kind of a, a formulative time in my kind of becoming an adult, um, I would definitely recommend something like that again, if we're looking at options for rekindling something that we've done in the past. Um, but it took, I mean, it was probably a whole year of planning that were um, of mostly fundraising kind of planning as well as logistics that went into that trip. Um, so given that we're, we're, I would say on the eager side of 
wanting to rekindle that relationship a little bit more sooner rather than later. And we don't know what the timing will be for international travel writ large, given the state of the pandemic and how quickly that's changing. Mm -hmm. um, I would recommend that we try something virtual for them with them um, and see if we can have some sort of virtual meeting with some combination of folks in Sheboygan and in Tsubame. Um, and maybe the goal is to have a virtual meeting to decide what we'd like to do, um, but, you know, or, or establish a relationship of, you know, I don't know, five or six people, like a, a small-ish group um, who then can take that forward and have uh, maybe more regular virtual meetings with them to talk about the kinds of programs that might make sense. Like if they, and I guess using also the, um, the symphony in Esslingen and Sheboygan as an example of, you know, we we have a lot to learn about what would make sense for what they're doing in Subame and what um, what their population is interested in and that sort of thing. So um, that's what I would recommend would be would be using Betty's Alderman Ackley's contacts to um, move towards um, figuring out some group of people to um, to talk with Subame folks um, to figure out what kinds of program to meet virtually and figure out what kinds of, and explore, I guess, brainstorm together, sort of what types of programming might make sense. Um, but Cole, you might have some recommendations culturally for what, um, or Alterman Ackley as well, for if that might make sense, you know, from the cultural perspective or not. Well, I think we have the beginning of a subcommittee here with Betty, Alexandria, and Cole. Uh, you know, it'd be great if uh, you could maybe meet uh, separately and, and maybe develop some of those ideas to bring back to the whole group. I'd be happy to participate, too. That sounds, sounds great. Good. Sounds we got a subcommittee started. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, is there any other discussion for this evening that uh, that we've talked about that anybody would like to bring up and uh, rehash, or shall we make a motion to close the meeting? Just close the meeting. Motion to adjourn by Henry and uh, second. Second. Who is that? This is Yo. Yolanda. Yolanda, okay. Any objections? No, you just have to ask for a vote. Let's have a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? All right. Thank you for uh, putting up with me this evening. Our uh, first time up here. And our next meeting is uh, April 1st. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks for Thank attending you. live and online.